take a look at the sun over there. It's pretty. Hopefully we don't have too much of a digital noise line on the camera lens. But Hey gang, welcome to another episode of Tim on the Fly. This particular episode we were kind of doing a little bit of a camera test. We we're Mostly I was just out uh, taking an evening and going to see how the camera did in low light conditions when the sun was uh, low in the sky and pointing directly at me and predictably the camera didn't do as well as I thought it would do or as well as I'd have liked it to have done. It did about how I thought it would do. But uh, a couple other cool things happened. Um, we got out there. It turned out to be a nice evening, a nice sunset. There were a lot of bugs on the water. So we took the uh, indicator rig out, set the indicator about a foot or two above a, a fur-collared nymph just to see what would happen. And I got to admit, you know, the, I very rarely go out with an indicator rig targeting catfish, but when the first one hits, that's what I'm after from then on out because they're a ton of fun. So uh, let's kind of take a look and see how the evening goes. Let's see what we got here. Back on the nymph again. Not sure what it is. Fighting almost like a drum. Oh, catfish. Kitty cat. We got ourselves a kitty cat on the fly rod. On the nymph. Let's get over here and get him landed. throwing the water around. There we go. There's our little kitty cat with the nymph sticking out of his mouth. Get that out of there real quick. Get him back out in the water. And away he goes. All kinds of mayflies out there. And there are things eating them. There's no way I'd be able to see my fly out there, so we're just going to stick with the indicator with that nymph just tucked right under it. See if we can't get something interested in emergers. Probably going to change the color on that indicator here pretty quick, though. It's not contrasting very well. If it keeps getting hit by catfish, it won't matter because they're just going to grab it and go. Won't be anything subtle about that. In the shop, when I'm when I'm talking to customers, a lot of people will ask me what color indicator works best, and my usual answer is the color that you know you can see the best. And normally, it doesn't really matter much, to be honest with you. They come in a lot of different colors and. A lot of people like each of those different colors. But evening time is one situation where it can be an issue because what you really want to make sure you do is have a good contrast so that you can see that indicator against the water in that odd light condition. Because if you can't, if you can't clearly see what that indicator is doing, there'll be some light strikes, there'll be some near misses, there'll be some ticks and bobs in that indicator that you'll never catch. You'll only see the times when the indicator goes straight under. Now lucky for us, we were dealing with Channel Cat nothing really really sneaky about them they're gonna come along they're gonna grab that nymph and that indicator is gonna go down and you're gonna know it so color wasn't as big of an issue at this point but if it would have been something else then we'd have had to work on that no sooner it got off the camera and that indicator went down so that's another bigger fish feels like it might be another catfish I think we're gonna go ahead and get him on the reel whatever he is may not be. Yeah, if it's a cat, it's a nice one. Yeah, I think it is, though. The way it's, fight, way it's fighting, it feels like a cat now. A little nicer than that last one, though. Let's see if we can't turn him away from the sun a little so that the camera's got a little better shot at getting him. 
Oh, we're taking drag now. Taking drag. Yeah, this is a little nicer cat. You wouldn't think this on the nymph, but there you go. Lots of stuff out there concentrating on those bugs. There we go. Now we got him coming in. Nice catfish. Good sized cat. Getting kind of up here a little bit. Get the rod down there for a little perspective. He's not bad at all, I'm telling you right now. Pause for a second and get a still picture of him. Okay. Go a couple pounds. Get the fly off of him. Get him out into the water here. And there he goes. I'd say our depth is about right. With the At least you're not going to hear me complain. About catching catfish. And we're doing just this just the same way we were doing it the last in the last video for the white bass. We're just putting it out there. Kind of letting it bounce on the current. A little later in the evening this evening. About Gosh, probably about seven o'clock now. Sun's getting low. Should be kind of a mix of things eating these nymphs, though. I'm surprised it's just the catfish so far. I think that might be cats out there making those splashy rises too. But uh, we we shall see what happens here. And it's very possible that those cats are up here. Oh, there we go, we got another fish. Very possible that these catfish might be up here focusing on smaller fish, but they're not turning down the nymphs when they swim up to one. And I don't know what we got here. Oh, oh another little cat. Another little channel cat. They must be in here pretty good. Listen to her groaning. Nice little fishy there. And where's that nymph? Right there in the corner of the mouth. Right where I like it to be. Wow, it's in there. Alrighty. Now, how did we do that? Okay. Took that all the way through. And somehow managed to get that doubled back through its lip. There we go. Notice I was holding that one upside down while I was doing that. A lot of times with, uh, with fish, if you hold them upside down, they relax and aren't quite as aggressive trying to flop around in your hand and with these little guys, the last thing you want is to get one of these fins poked in the finger while you're trying to get them off the hook. So, it's one way to kind of keep them calmed down a little bit. Of course, with those little ones like that, you can kind of hold them in your hand. With the bigger ones, it's a little bit of a, an issue, or at least a little bit more of an issue. It's that bigger one earlier, I just left it laying on the laying on the bank kind of in the water while we worked on it. Just tons and tons of flies. I don't know if it's showing up on the video or not, but there's just a million mayflies out here tonight. 
I think we've got a little bit of a mix. We've got a hatch and we've got a mating flight going on. So there we go. There's oh, that feels like that might be a better one. That feels like a better one. We're gonna get that guy on the on the reel. Oh, just took off running there. They usually don't run too much. They're really good at pulling hard at the end of the line. And they'll make short runs. But they're usually not big runners like a carp or a, or a wiper or something like that would be. But this guy uh, doesn't want to come in. He's not really acting like a catfish. I wonder if this might be a carp. Yeah, this is acting a little bit more like a carp. It's not a carp, it's a nice cat, or a big drum. No, it's a cat. Not as big as I thought he was going to be. Maybe he thinks he's bigger. Still not bad. Almost wish... Almost wish I had a stringer or something with me. A couple of these might have been going home tonight, but oh, come on, buddy, come on in, come on in. Here we go. You're big enough. We're just gonna leave you laying there on the on the bank. Notice I'm keeping him kind of in the water while I do this, so he's not laying out. We're just going to turn you around and head you right back out into the water. All right. Okay, so we kind of lost our sunlight, so we're going to ditch the indicator because I can't really see it out there very well, and we're just going to tight line this guy. Try to keep the depth about where it was on the indicator. This is going to have advantages and disadvantages. The main disadvantage is going to be we're not going to have the depth control. The big advantage is that we're going to be able to cover a lot more water. We're not getting quite as many splashy rises as we were a few minutes ago. Which means that the hatch part of all these insects might be starting to die down a little. There's still clouds of them in the air, so we're going to give it a shot yet. See what we can get to happen. I think it's going to be a really cool sunset tonight by the looks of it. We'll get a chance to test the camera out and see what it does in that situation. Take a look at the sun over there. Pretty. Hopefully we don't have too much of a digital noise line on the camera lens. One little thing about fishing dam faces like this is that the, cat, the fish are going to be pretty much spread out all along it if they're in at all. And they're going to be cruising typically so very rarely is one spot or another going to be more productive overall. But one spot may be very much more or less productive at the moment. And you kind of have two strategies you can use. You can either find one place and park and wait for the fish to find you. Or you can move and keep moving and find them. I generally kind of do a little of both really most of the time. Haven't had anything even so much as look at this nymph since I took the indicator off, so we might have to put it back on too. Okay. We're getting a little low on battery life, so I think I'm going to shut this down and wait until there's something to film. So here we are at the end of another episode of Tim on the Fly. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. I know I had fun making it, had fun catching the fish. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy it. So you won't miss any more content coming out from the channel. And uh, tight lines, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.